We begin with Conway, a truck driver who works as a delivery man for an antique shop owned by a woman named Lisette. Being hired to make a delivery to Five Dogwood Drive, Conway travels the roads around Interstate 65 in Kentucky, USA, attempting to locate the address, accompanied by his dog, Blue. After searching for some time, Conway realizes that he's lost, and stops off at a nearby gas station, Equus Oils, where he meets an old man named Joseph, the owner of the establishment. Joseph informs Conway that the only way to arrive at Dogwood Drive is by taking the mysterious Route Zero before tasking him with accessing the basement circuit breaker in order to restore power to the station, which will allow him to use the station's computer to access directions. Conway goes underneath the station and meets three people who are playing a tabletop game while ignoring him completely. He's able to retrieve their lost 20-sided die, and they disappear afterwards, clearing the path to the breaker. When asking Joseph about the strange people who disappeared, he suggests Conway may have been hallucinating. Per Joseph's instruction, Conway uses the computer to locate the directions of the Marquez farm in order to talk to Weaver Marquez, who has a better understanding of the roads. As Conway leaves, Joseph tells him that he loaded a TV into the back of his truck to take to Weaver. Conway drives to the Marquez residence and meets Weaver, who asks him a number of questions before he finally asks her about directions to the Zero. She has Conway set up the TV, and when Conway looks into the screen, he sees a vision of a strange farm. When he regains his senses, Weaver informs him of her cousin Shannon, who fixes TVs, and gives him directions to the Zero before suddenly disappearing. Arriving at the location Weaver directed him to, Conway discovers the area is an abandoned mine shaft called the Elkhorn Mine. He locates Shannon Marquez, who's been exploring the mine in search of something she's lost. Conway decides to help Shannon travel deeper into the mine, and uses the sound waves from a public address system to measure the size of the tunnels, which causes a portion of the mine to collapse. Conway's leg is injured from the falling rubble, and the duo use a mine cart on a track to help them traverse through the mine. While exploring, Shannon reveals the mine's tragic history, involving the deaths of many miners due to flooding. Before exiting the mines, Shannon leaves Conway and travels a bit farther down the mine shaft on her own, discovering several miners' helmets before returning to him. Conway and Shannon travel to her workshop, and then back to the Marquez farm, where Shannon reveals that the Marquez family's debts had caused Weaver to leave town. As Shannon attempts to fix Weaver's old TV, Conway stares into it again, and the image of the farm begins to warp and separate, causing the screen to show the location of the entrance to the Underground Zero, and Conway, along with Shannon and Blue, drive the truck into it. Lula Chamberlain, an installation artist, receives a rejection notice from the Gaston Trust for Imagined Architecture. After reading this notice, Lula sorts through a series of proposals for reclaimed spaces to repurpose them, such as a proposal to reclaim a basketball court for use as a dog kennel. Conway, Shannon, and Blue arrive at a six-story building known as the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. In the lobby, they're told that in order to receive directions to Dogwood Drive, they must first obtain an ingestion notice from within the Bureau. The receptionist suggests they seek out Lula, currently the Bureau's senior clerk. After a series of bureaucratic misdirections, the trio manages to meet with Lula. She informs him that the file for Dogwood Drive, which she requires to provide directions, is at an off-site storage facility within an old church. Additionally, she suggests Conway should seek out Dr. Truman for treatment of his injured leg. At the storage facility, Conway chats about hobbies with the caretaker of the building and listens to a pre-recorded sermon on the virtue of hard work while Shannon finds the file they're seeking. As they leave the building, Conway collapses from his injury, hallucinating about Elkhorn Mine, and they decide that their first priority should be to find Truman and obtain treatment for his leg. Returning to the Bureau, and finding that Lula is no longer there, the receptionist tells the trio that Truman can be found at his house, off of Interstate 65, leading the group to leave the Zero, returning above ground in search of Truman. Arriving at Truman's last known address, the group discovers that the doctor's house is no longer there, instead finding the Museum of Dwellings. While searching the museum, they encounter a young boy named Ezra, who claims that his brother is Julian, a giant eagle. Ezra tells him that Truman now lives in the forest, and offers to fly them there using Julian. The group accepts, and after traveling a long distance aboard Julian, lands in the forest. As Conway's condition worsens, Shannon helps him along, and the group finally locates Truman's house, where he tells Conway that his injury is severe but treatable, and prescribes him an anesthetic called Neuripnol TM. Conway is strongly affected by the drug, causing his vision to fade as he sees the walls of the house fall away, revealing the forest beyond. Conway dreams of a previous conversation he had with Lisette. The two recall a tragic event involving Charlie, Lisette's son, and Lisette informs Conway of a new delivery to be made, which will be the final delivery of Lisette's antique shop. Conway awakens from the Neuripnol TM-induced sleep at Truman's house to find his injured leg replaced with a strange skeletal limb giving off a yellow glow. 
After returning to the Museum of Dwellings and finding it closed for the night, the group resumes their search for Lula and Conway's truck. The three are quickly stopped again, however, after the truck's engine breaks down. While Shannon calls for a tow truck, two musicians, Johnny and Junebug, pass the group on a motorcycle with a sidecar, and after some discussion, decide to help the group get the truck moving again, in exchange for following them to the Lower Depths bar to watch their performance. The group agrees, traveling to the Lower Depths, and talking with Harry, the bartender, who provides them with directions back to the Zero. After their performance, Johnny and Junebug decide to accompany the group on their travels. Upon returning to the Zero, the group comes across a large cave with a huge rock spire known as the Hall of the Mountain King. There, they find various types of vintage electronics in varying states of disrepair, including a large amount of them set on fire. They come across an old man named Donald, who appears fixated on a grand computer project involving a machine that's enhanced by black mold growing inside of it, as well as a piece of software designed to be a comprehensive simulation called Xanadu. Donald claims that Lula is one of the people who designed Xanadu along with him, and that even though she left a long time ago, there may still be a way to locate her using it. However, as Xanadu is not working correctly due to an apparent sabotage by creatures that Donald calls the Strangers, the group must travel to the place where the Strangers come from in order to seek out their help. Conway and Shannon talk to the Strangers, who tell them to scrape the mold off the machine's timing crystal, and after traveling back with the group to the Hall of the Mountain King and fixing Xanadu, they use it to locate Lula. With Donald's help, she finds the directions to Dogwood Drive and tells the group to meet her back at the Bureau. After arriving at the Bureau, Conway receives Lula's directions, which involve taking a ferry from the Bureau down a river. While waiting for the ferry, Conway reveals to the rest of the group in greater detail what happened while he and Shannon were talking with the strangers. They located a hidden elevator in an old church, which led to an underground whiskey distillery staffed by odd, glowing skeletons identical in appearance to Conway's new leg. While at the factory, Conway was mistaken for a new hire shipping truck driver, coerced into drinking a very expensive whiskey, and was subsequently forced into a job driving trucks for the distillery to pay off the debt. As he informs the group that he must start his new job in a few hours, the ferry arrives. The group boards the Mucky Mammoth Tugboat Ferry, and rides it as it travels along the underground river known as the Echo, with the boat's captain, Kate, her assistant, Will, and a passenger named Clara, who plays the theremin, a musical instrument. They make several short stops along the way. A floating refueling station, a tiki bar called the Rum Colony, a waterside telephone booth, a psychological research facility called the Radvansky Center, and a cypress-covered island rich with edible mushrooms. Kate needs to deliver a package to a telephone exchange station located in a flooded train tunnel, but the tugboat can't pass through the area without disturbing a protected bat sanctuary, so Conway and Shannon agree to take a dinghy through it to reach the station. Conway, who has been drinking more alcohol and whose behavior is become increasingly erratic, sees another small boat with two glowing skeletons, similar to those at the whiskey distillery, and remarks that he's been seeing them repeatedly on the river journey. He tells Shannon he wants to take the job at the distillery and pass his delivery truck on to her, and she agrees to keep it until he gets his debt settled. They pass by a monument to the Elkhorn mine disaster before proceeding through the bat sanctuary. Shannon delivers the package to Poppy, the only remaining telephone operator, but when Shannon turns around to reboard the dinghy, she finds that Conway is now completely turned into a skeleton and has boarded the small boat with the other two skeletons, proceeding to depart with them instead. Shannon continues down the river alone on the dinghy, reuniting with the rest of the Mucky Mammoth passengers and crew at Sam and Ida's, a seafood restaurant. The group eats and converses with the proprietors before traveling to a neighborhood of houseboats where Clara gives a musical performance. Their last stop is the silo of late reflections, where Shannon, Clara, Johnny, Junebug, and Ezra all disembark, pushing Conway's truck off the boat as it won't start up again. As there is only a spiral staircase leading to the surface from the silo, the group is unable to proceed with the truck. Nevertheless, Shannon resolves to continue trying to make Conway's delivery to Dogwood Drive, and so the group unloads the delivery items from the truck, carrying them up the stairs on foot. After the group hauls all the contents of Conway's truck to the top of the silo, they discover it's actually a well in the center of a small town. While exploring, they finally discover and arrive at 5 Dogwood Drive, an empty and abandoned house in the town that stands new and pristine, despite the rest of the town sustaining heavy damage from a flash flood. The group meets and converses with the remaining town residents, learning about its history and landmarks, including a graveyard, a library, a waffle restaurant, an airstrip hangar, and a public access television station. Both the group and the residents debate on whether or not they will stay to try and rebuild the community or leave in hopes of finding better lives. One of the residents, Ron, digs a grave to bury the neighbors, two horses that were fixtures of town life and who died in the flood. An impromptu funeral ceremony is held in honor of the horses, where town resident Nikki reads a poem and station producer Emily sings a song. 
Afterward, the group and other remaining town residents finished moving the items from Conway's truck into Five Dogwood Drive, at last completing his delivery, before gathering within the house and making use of the items to relax and enjoy their accomplishment.